along with transporting camera-toting tourists, the Rhine moves a steady flow of cargo to the world's biggest port, Rotterdam, which waits at the mouth of the river. Barge workers are almost a subculture. Many own their own ships. The captain and his family live in the stern, car parked on the rooftop. The crew lives in the bow. Logically, imports like oil go upstream and exports like German manufactured goods go downstream. The powerful Rhine has long been treacherous to navigate. Boats generally pass on the right. Since downstream ships can't stop or maneuver as freely, upstream boats are expected to do the tricky do -si do work. Large triangular signals posted before troublesome blind bends in the river warn of oncoming ships. Each triangle covers a segment of the bend, the lowest triangle being the nearest. They warn of approaching ships. If the bottom side of a triangle is lit, that sector is empty. But if the left side is lit, there's an oncoming ship in that sector. The most dangerous bend in the river swings around a rocky bluff called the Lorelei. Because of reefs just upstream, many ships never made it safely past the Lorelei, and the rocky cliff remains steeped in myth. Sailors blamed their misfortune on a frolein so wunderbar, her long blonde hair almost covered her body. This legendary siren flirted and sang her distracting songs from this rock. Just downriver from the Lorelei is the pleasant town of St. Gore, founded in the 6th century by a monk famous for his hospitality. According to legend, early sailors would stop here for a rest and a prayer of thanks after surviving the seductive and treacherous Lorelei. Today, St. Gore is a tourist town. Its only hazard, streets of shopping opportunities. This shop brags it has the world's largest free-hanging cuckoo clock. This one specializes in style. 